Now the first task for you who come as a raw recruit is to find out who you might wish to love. The next task is to make sure that she likes you. The third, to see to it that the love will last. That's my aim. That's the ground my chariot will cover. That's the post my thundering wheels will scrape. I don't demand you set your sails and search or wear out some long road to discover them. Perseus brought Andromeda from the darkest India, and Trojan Paris snatched his girl from Greece. Rome will grant you lots of such lovely girls. You'll say, here's everything the world has had. Venus, Aeneas' mother, haunts his city. If you'd catch them very young and not yet grown, real child brides will come before your eyes. If it's young girls you want, thousands will please you. If you delight greatly in older, wiser years here too, believe me, there's an even greater crowd. Just walk slowly under Pompeii's shady colonnade, when the sun's in Leo on the back of Hercules' lion, or where Octavia added to her dead son, Marcellus's gifts, and the sacred Sabbath rites of the Syrian Jews. And the law courts, who'd believe it, they suit love. A flame is often found in the noisy courts. But hunt for them, especially at the tiered theater. That place is the most fruitful for your needs. There you'll find one to love or one you can play with. One to be with just once or one you might wish to keep. As ants return home often in long processions, carrying their favorite food in their mouths, so our fashionable ladies crowd to the famous shows. They come to see, they come to be seen as well. The place is fatal to chaste modesty. The theaters remain a snare for the beautiful. I'll be a soldier if you give me what suits me. And tears help. Tears will move a stone. Let her see your damp cheeks if you can. If tears, they don't always come at the right time, fail you. Touch your eyes with a wet hand. What wise man doesn't mingle tears with kisses? This all comes from the work of Ovid and his book Ars Amatoria, and as you can see, he speaks of women in a sort of degrading manner, and he'll continue to do this for a while. But he'll go on to mention how to dress your best in Roman times, which I'll get onto in part two. However, for us today, thankfully there is Bespoke. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club which delivers you top shelf goods every month. They select the best brands that have sort of fallen under the radar, purchase them from small businesses, mainly in the US, and ship them to you. Each month you'll be introduced to new goods. So you can keep to clothing or branch out to outdoor gear, home or kitchen goods, barware or more. They keep on changing it every month. Every one of these boxes is worth around $70 retail, but you'll get it for just $45. And you get to preview the contents before it's shipped to you. Then you have the option to ship it, swap it, or skip the month for no charge. For me, I've loved the Weekender bag, which, as the name suggests, is ideal for weekend getaways. And for me, living in Istanbul, this has been essential for escaping the city. Then there is also the retreat box, with the hammock and camping gear, which I've also fell in love with. Upon entering, you'll be taken to a quiz where you'll select your preferences, so you'll always be sent something you like, and if you go to the link below and use the code JABSY20, you'll get 20% off your first box or you can just go to bsbk.me slash jabsy20. So get some quality goods for nearly half the price, stock up on your kitchen, get the best camping gear, or even get a cool home bar. The choice is yours. But for now, we'll go back to Ovid and his tips on what to do when women are crying at the theater. And as you can probably guess, it'll be a little bit creepy. Though she might not give, take what isn't given. Perhaps she'll struggle and then say you're wicked. Struggling, she still wants herself to be conquered. Only take care her lips aren't bruised by snatching and that she can't complain that you are harsh. Who takes a kiss and doesn't take the rest deserves to lose all that were granted to. How much short of your wish are you after that kiss? Ah me, that was boorishness stopped you, not modesty. Though you call it force, it's force that pleases girls. What delights is often to have given what they wanted against their will. She who is taken in love's sudden onslaught is pleased and finds wickedness is a tribute. 
and she who might have been forced and escapes unscathed will be saddened, though her face pretends delight. Don't forget the races, those noble stallions. No need here for fingers to give secret messages. You can sit by your lady, nothing's forbidden. Press your thighs to hers as you can do all the time. And it's good the rose force you close. Now find your reason for friendly conversation, and first of all, engage in casual talk. Make earnest inquiry whose those horses are, and rush back to her favorite, whatever it is. If by chance a speck of dust falls in the girl's lap, as it may, let it be flicked away by your fingers, and if there's nothing, flick away the nothing. Let anything be a reason for you to serve her. If her skirt is trailing too near the ground, lift it and raise it carefully from the dusty earth. Straight away, the prize for service, if she allows it, is that your eyes catch a glimpse of her legs. Don't forget to look at who's sitting behind you, that he doesn't press her sweet back with his knee. Small things please light minds. While talking, touching hands, checking the program, and asking, having bet, which one will win. And if she among them asks the name of a king, what place and what streams displayed, you can reply to all and more if she asks. Him and him, their generals, and say what names they have, if you can, the true ones, if not the most fitting. First, let faith enter into your mind. Every one of them can be won. You'll win her, if you only set your snares. Birds will sooner be silent in the spring than a woman refuse a young man's flattering words. Men pretend badly. She hides her desire. If it was proper for men not to be the first to ask, women's role would be to take the part of the asker. The cow lows to the bull in gentle pastures. The mare whinnies to the hoof stallion. Desire in us is milder and less frantic. The male fire has its lawful limits. Remember Biblis, who, burned with incestuous love for her brother and bravely punished herself with the noose? All these things were driven by a woman's lust. It's more fierce than ours and more frenzied. So, on, and never hesitate in hoping for any woman. There's hardly one among them who will deny you. But to get to know your desired one's maid is your first care. She'll smooth your way. See if she's close to her mistress's thoughts. Corrupt her with promises and with prayers. You'll easily get what you want, if she wishes. She'll tell the time. The doctors would know it too. When her mistress's mind is receptive, fit for love. Her mind will be fit for love. When she luxuriates in fertility, like the crop on some rich soil. The maid can rouse her when she combs her hair in the morning and add her oar to the work of your sails. But hurry, lest the sails fall and the breeze dies. Anger melts away with time like fragile ice. You ask perhaps if one should take the maid herself? Such a plan brings the greatest risk with it. My advice is to abstain. Still, while she's giving and taking messages, if her body pleases you as much as her zeal, make the lady your first priority, her companion the next. Love should never be begun with a servant. I warn you of this, if art's skill is to be believed. Hold fast to the stricken fish you've caught on the hook. Press home the attempt. Don't leave off till you've won. It's a mistake to think that only farmers working the fields and sailors need to keep an eye on the season. Let your mistress's birthday be one of great terror to you. That's a black day when anything has to be given. However much you avoid it, she'll still win. It's a woman's skill to strip wealth from an ardent lover. A loose robe peddler comes to your lady. She likes to buy. She'll ask you to look because you know what to look for, then kiss you, then ask you to buy her something there. She swears that she'll be happy with it for years, but she needs it now. Now the price is right. They many times ask for gifts. They never give in return. You lose, and you'll get no thanks for your loss. And ten mouths with as many tongues wouldn't be enough for me to describe the wicked tricks of whores.